Sorry, go ahead. At fire headquarters. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'd like to welcome you to the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Agency Governing Board meeting, the Joint Regular Governing and Implementation Board meeting. Let's see. I'm looking on the agenda. Call to order, please. Ferris Tucker? Here. Wasserman? Here. Board members Constantine? Here. Crabtree? Here. Tate? Here. Herrera? Rogers? Courtney? Here. Calra? Laro Munoz? Santos? Samidian? Here. Sua? Here. And Kalnan? Thank you. We have a quorum for the governing board. At this time, I will see report from the chairs. I do not have a report. I hope everyone had a wonderful summer. <laughs> Thank you. I, um, I'll just report that the Giants are on life support. <laughs> they are. Um, that we have excellent news, and I'm looking forward to the presentation in, in this report. And that's all I got. Okay. At this time, we would like a report from the Public Advisory Commission. Is Walt Lines here? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you for uh, uh, delivering us this uh, beautiful day outside. Um, concerning the Gavilan College uh, project in Coyote Valley. Uh, oh, Put my microphone. There we go. Otherwise, it doesn't record well. Uh, okay, I need the exercise. Uh, the uh, last uh, two weeks ago, Gavilan uh, approved a, a bid for five modular buildings on 55 acres at 560 Bailey Road in Coyote Valley. And, and this is for our uh, police training program that serves uh, many uh, communities throughout the Santa Clara Valley and as far away as Lake Tahoe Community College area. The total estimated project cost for this project is uh, $21 million, and uh, uh, the majority of that is coming from Measure E, which uh, uh, voters approved in 2008 uh, for um, Gavilan projects. And the first phase should be open with police training uh, there uh, by this time next year. And what, what has happened is that the uh, Evergreen San Jose City College Board has decided to put uh, commercial uses on its property on the school campus and has displaced the, uh, uh, the academy. So we welcomed it with open arms. Translated to Gavilan, uh, that's approximately 500 full-time equivalent students with uh, an average yield of, of state support based on the, the student enrollment for, formula of $2.4 million. Nice. Thank you. Any questions for Wall? No? Thank you very much. At this time, we will have the public comment period for items that are not currently on the agenda. Is there anyone in the public? Not seeing any. Okay, going on to Governing Board Action Regular Business. I would take a motion for item one, approve the minutes of the June 18th regular Governing Board meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a second, first and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Item two, acceptance of the uh, conservation easement over the United Technologies Corporation Coyote Ridge property. Are we having a staff report on that one? Yes, I was going to give a presentation on that. Okay. So the action today is to um, for the governing board to adopt a resolution approving a conservation easement over the United Technology Corporation Coyote Ridge property, and there are several APNs on there. And I will uh, now proceed with the presentation. Well, this is an exciting day yep. for the agency. Uh, this is the first property that will be officially enrolled in the reserve system. And uh, I'd like to start off by thanking OSA. And I know Matt wants to come up and say a few words, but before I do that, they, uh, they did all the hard negotiations with the United Technology Pratt & Whitney Division. 
they uh, wrote all the grants to get the funding and uh, hats off to the team effort that they put in to make this happen. And then I'd like to thank ICF and the wildlife agencies for, uh, cause it was a difficult negotiations cause all the funders had different ideas on what, how things could fit together in the jigsaw puzzle that was the funding for this. And uh, it came together in the end and it's a great achievement for the region and for, um, for this agency and for the Open Space Authority. So I know Matt wants to come up and say a few words. Good afternoon, members of the board. I'm Matt Freeman on behalf of the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority. Um, I really wanna appreciate the opportunity to speak on behalf of this project. As you'll gather from the presentation that you're, um, you'll see soon, it really can't be emphasized enough how truly significant this, pro this project is for the environment and the community. It has truly unparalleled conservation values. These include um, opportunities for habitat protection and restoration for rare, threatened, and endangered species, a truly unparalleled opportunity to maintain regional landscape connectivity between the Santa Cruz Mountains and the Diablo Range. This habitat connectivity, this regional landscape linkage is one of the most important long-term climate resilient strategies. And finally, the, the project provides really important opportunities for careful management of the preserve and opportunities for public recreation and environmental education. Uh, we at the authority have been working for years to structure the deal with UTC and to secure some of the partner funding for this project. But really this has been a regional um, priority for well over 20 years. It was identified as a top priority in many plans and studies commissioned by the Nature Conservancy, the wildlife agencies, the Bay Area Open Space Council, and so many other conservation organizations throughout the region. And the, the wide variety of partner support and grant funding that have been contributed to the project um, really reflect its regional significance. Um, your approval of this really important milestone today will create a unique new partnership between the Santa Clara Valley Open Space Authority and the Valley Habitat Agency. I think it's very auspicious that this is the first property to be enrolled in the reserve system. We at the Open Space Authority are really excited about working in partnership with the habitat agencies and the wildlife agencies to ensure the properties, it's the lasting protection of its conservation values. And we hope this will be the first of many successful partnerships to come. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I'll just give you a quick overview of, uh, of the property in question here. So as you can see on the map, um, the area outlined in gold is the Coyote Ridge Open Space Preserve. So these are the parcels in question. The entire UTC uh, land holdings are uh, over 5,000 acres and this acquisition is, is a little bit more than 1,800 acres. And I'll just go through some pictures. It's a beautiful property with stunning views and uh, 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 wildlife uh, abundance and a beautiful array of wildflowers. And you can just see some of the, uh, of course, the elk. <laughs> and here's some of the views from the serpentine in the Coyote Valley. So as Matt alluded to, this is an extraordinarily important property. This is This is one of the properties that the agency needed to enroll in the reserve system to ensure uh, that the permit would be successfully uh, implemented and come to conclusion in 47 years. So without this property, uh, the permit would have been at risk. So it supports 12 land cover types, the serpentine bunch grass as the dominant land cover type, uh, encompasses 34% of serpentine bunch grass land and 12% of the stream system acquisition requirements for the entire reserve system. Contains habitat for 14 covered species, 14 known occurrences of six covered plant species. Fulfills 36% of the bay checker spot butterfly mild habitat and 75% uh, uh, of the uh, fragrant uh, for little Terry, excuse me, occurrences uh, acquisition requirements for the reserve system. A designated critical habitat for both the bay checker spot butterfly and the California red-legged frog. 
It's also a key link in the Bay Ridge Trail. So recreation is also an important component of this property. So the mechanics of the acquisition. Um, some thank yous are also in, in order here for all these organizations that provided funding for this and for the United Technology Corporation for doing a, uh, uh, what we would call like a bargain sale through the tax credit program reimbursement <coughs> that, the, that the state of California has. So you can see that 55% of the acquisition was actually uh, um, a tax credit for the UTC Corporation. So the funders are the Bureau of Rec, uh, State Parks, uh, Coastal Conservancy, Resource Legacy Fund, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service through Section 6, Wildlife Conservation Board, Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, and um, last but not least, but the Open Space Authority. So there's rare flora. You can see some pictures on the bottom, including... Uh, uh, and all those, uh, except for the San Francisco wallflower and the Hall's bush marlow, they're all uh, plants that are covered by our uh, plan. These are uh, known locations and populations of those plants. There's also rare fauna out there, including um, bay chucker spat, butterfly, red-legged frog, tiger salamander and the burrowing owl, which are all covered by the plan, as well as state fully protected species, golden eagle and white-tailed kite. And that's uh, where there is some known occurrences or have in the past have been occurrences of, of some of those species. The valuable habitat on the site, you have 1,400 acres of serpentine plant communities. Uh, as noted before, critical habitat for the butterfly. There are nine ponds on the property, seven which support rare species. 10 miles of stream that flow to Coyote Creek, two acres of freshwater uh, wetlands. The Thule Elk Preserve, uh, it's also a uh, range uh, for the mountain lion. And then there's also uh, potential for other uh, rare animals such as the American badger, tricolored blackbird, which is covered by the plan, and um, paled bat. Um, it's, there's active grazing on the site. There's a, there's a Santa Clara County uh, rancher that is currently grazing the property. And uh, we plan to continue grazing because grazing the serpentine lands is extraordinarily important for keeping down the non-native grasses and allowing for the native plants to thrive, which are needed for the butterfly to um, do its thing. Promote, uh, so, it, it, as noted there, enhances habitat for the butterfly, reduce spread of invasive uh, plants, and um, limit impacts from cattle on grazing monitoring. So that's sort of the things that we'll be focusing on, along with OSA. Uh, invasive species management will be done out there through grazing and um, other uh, techniques. Aquatic habitat management, there's the ponds that I noted in the wetlands and there's opportunity to do restoration and um, creation of uh, aquatic features. There'll be a lot of science and monitoring going on there related to the, the species covered by the plan as well as the opportunity for research by Bay Area universities and others to do uh, work on the butterfly as well as other species. Uh, monitoring is required by the habitat plan. Uh, this, this shows some of the uh, future uh, recreational amenities that are out there. Viewing stations, staging area, proposed two campgrounds, and um, trails that most of the trails will be using the existing uh, cattle roads that are out there now. Uh, so pathway to reserve system enrollment, um, you have the Open Space Authority reviewed and approved the conservation easement on July 23rd. Wildlife Conservation Board reviewed and approved the tax credit donation and the WC grant funding on September 3rd. We're here today for your approval. Uh, the close of escrow is October 30th and the property will be enrolled in the Habitat Plan Reserve System uh, sometime in November. So the action requested today is governing board to adopt a resolution approving a conservation easement over the UTC Coyote Ridge property. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Go ahead. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, question regarding the phase one environmental analysis of hazardous material. Mm -hmm. Phase one sounds like there's another phase after it. So could you go over it a little bit? Yes. No, no other phases beyond the phase one on this, on these parcels. These, these were the buffer lands for the, the missile uh, rocket booster construction that you as a firefighter probably <laughs> Yeah, what was going on over there? And as a citizen of Morgan yeah. Hill, knowing what perchlorate does to yeah. our water table, so yeah. I was kind of surprised when I read in the report that it was deemed clean. Yes, it's all on the. Uh, so, the other property is extraordinarily valuable too. The other 3,200 acres, and that's in the Shingle Valley uh, section off of Medcalf Road, and there is uh, that's where all the contamination happened. And there's active uh, groundwater cleanup going on. They're following a state cleanup uh, order from um, the regional water board and uh, state EPA and federal EPA. So they're cleaning the groundwater. All the other sites have been cleaned up, but it's probably, you know, you hear estimates of how many more years they'll be cleaning up the groundwater there from anywhere from 30 to 100. So hard to say, but the site that this site in question was was never impacted by 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 any of the hazardous waste materials. That's good to know. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? I'll make a motion to approve. Sorry, to before you vote, Rose, we do actually need Rose for this vote, oh. um, and she should be driving up any minute. Is there anyone in the public that would like to have a comment on this item? I just want to get perhaps that out supervisor submitting might want to have a definition of the fragrant fritillary occurrence. <laughs> happens not. Not you got that covered. All right. <laughs> it's anyone just fun to any, say. Anyone know any good tunes? <laughs> you do. <laughs> I can sing the national anthem again. <laughs> we can move on to the next item, though. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Okay, yes. we'll move on to the next item and then uh, come back to. So, item three, final report, fiscal year fifteen revenues and budget expenditures. Good afternoon, Governing Board members. I'm Jill Maras, and I will be presenting the um, final report for the fiscal year 15 revenues and budget expenditures. Um, it's simply a review, and to review the revenues and expenditures for fiscal year 15, um, th July 1, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. Um, as you will note, um, we we surpassed our budget this year. We're very pleased. Um, our final fiscal year revenues, final fiscal year 15 revenues totaled $7,524,496, and this total slightly surpassed the amended revenue project projection, which was presented at the January 15, 2015 Governing Board meeting. Through meetings and open discussion with Habitat's co-permittees on a regular basis, the agency was able to clearly identify and provide follow-through on all anticipated fees. And um, you will see noted there our final revenue and what it was made up of. I'm also pleased to email out to you. Um, we do show under fee revenue um, our budget in the different categories and what was actually received, as well as how each partner came in, the City of Gilroy, City of Morgan Hill, City of San Jose, County of Santa Clara, the Water District, and VTA, so what each of them contributed. I do have that as well and would be pleased to send that to you. Um, and then as we get into final fiscal year 2015 expenditures for our cost centers, um, you will see that listed. Um, our admin support grant services, we were under budget. Um, our tech and permitting support, we were 47042 over budget, um, simply because of an unanticipated increase with the contractor responsible for working within this cost center. It was learned that a significant dollar amount of their fees were actually chargeable to um, our cost center three, but they were billing us under cost center two. So we've had meetings with them and that's going to change as we go into the new fiscal year. Um, 
Again, costs were well below budgeted expenditures. And um, there is no fiscal impact. Projected revenue and expenditures for fiscal year 15 were within the outlook parameters presented on January 15th, 2015. Thank you. Anyone have any questions for Jill? No? I think there's no action taken. This is just a final exactly. information. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You bet. If you Well, we can go on to item future governing board initiated agenda items. Does anybody have anything they want to bring forward for a future meeting? No? Okay. We can temporarily go. I don't know how you want to do that. Go on to. Let's go on to number four. First of all, do we have a quorum for the impl implementation board? We do. Okay. We have a quorum for implementation, not governing. Correct. Okay, so approval of the minutes of the joint meetings. Our council won't allow, I assume, or unless you want just the implementation board to approve it and come back to governing, it seems a little silly. Yeah. We come back to that one? I suggest you come back and maybe have the implementation board move All to right. its items. Thank you. Governing board chair, if it's okay with you, then we can move on to uh, items five, which is implementation board action only. Okay. When Rose comes here, we can wrap up number three. Um, what I would like to suggest, we're now on item um, under the consent agenda for implementation board for implementation board members items five six seven and eight are currently on the consent agenda I would like to suggest that we take seven off just to hear from our executive officer briefly on on that item I think but it's appropriate that uh, this board giving you that that right and that responsibility be heard in an open and public forum so if you can give us a brief report on seven and I would suggest fellow board members that we put number 11 on consent. So that would be my motion if there's not. Um, I believe you, Doug. So wherever we've got it, we'll do that in just a minute. But my, my motion at the moment is to move, take seven off and put 11 on. That's fine. Uh, the second, second, second. second motion, any discussion on that? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So um, we've put, Sorry, we'll hear seven in just a minute. Now we have the consent items, which will be items five, six, eight, nine, and 11. And I understand we have a speaker card on eight. Do we have anyone else from the public wishing to speak on any, on any of the consent items, items five, six, eight, nine, and now 11? Seeing none. Doug, could you come forward, please? and. Uh, Kind of just flip the whole room around. I like what you've done here. Much larger audience than I expected. Thank you, chairs. Um, for the record, my name is Doug Muirhead. I live in Morgan Hill. Uh, back on November 20th of last year, we approved contracting policies for the agency. At that time, I made a request for uh, several things to be considered um, to help the general public understand both uh, bid awards and uh, contractor performance. Uh, I ask that uh, bidders be uh, identified, uh, that you discuss how you recruited them, how uh, they were to be scored in the uh, final rankings. I ask for objective standards to do performance evaluation, and I ask for uh, some information if uh, contracts were terminated. Uh, so, the agency's response at the time, as I recall, is that they would be added to individual contracts and there was probably a qualifier of if necessary. So how do we do on this particular contract? In terms of bidding, we have five un unidentified bidders and the agency selected the best one. That's a little less than I was asking for. Uh, the second item was to do a uh, objective uh, standard for performance evaluation and there's a, a lengthy, I admit I didn't even read the whole thing, uh, scope of work. So the agency very, uh, very admirably uh, accommodated that request. And then finally to help us understand why a contract would be terminated, 
uh, whether there was some remedial action to try and preserve it before canceling it and what we learned from that so we wouldn't make the, the, the next uh, contract make the same mistakes. Uh, what you have in this contract is under termination. It says so uh, with seven days notice, we can cancel it for no cause. And uh, if there's material breach, we can cancel it immediately. So the, the background, the understanding, the learning are, are not there. So those were uh, my com comments. I was a little disappointed in this. And it's up to you whether you think it's important enough to do something about it for the benefit of the general public. Thank you. Thank you. If uh, I'll ask Mr. Sullivan if he could respond briefly to the comments made. Yes, we we did score. Uh, there were five firms that submitted bids. We interviewed three, and we did do a uh, ranking of those firms, and uh, both a numeric ranking and also um, uh, one through the oral presentation. We did a, a you know a, a judgment on the quality of the presentations by by the three firms. There was myself, uh, Kelly Camaro from um, Santa Cruz uh, RCD, who's helping us out with some of the restorations, and Don Rocha from County Parks, that were part of the review team for for this project. There was there was no bias, but we can definitely provide Doug if he wants to see the scores. We can certainly share that with him. And in the future, as far as the names that have submitted that are being considered, yeah, can that be public? Is there any reason it can't be public? We certainly could identify who bid. I would say that it's not a particularly good idea to provide the public with the scores with regard to um, the bidders. You know, uh, you, you don't want to blackball a firm who simply maybe didn't uh, do a particularly good job in this submission but might do a perfectly fine job in another submission. Um, it's it's kind of like grading kids in school. So, um, you know, we can certainly identify who the, the various um, bidders were in subsequent reports, um, but I don't think it's appropriate to discuss why people were not selected as opposed to why a no, particular no, firm No was. argument here. I agree with that. Any, any disagreement with that going forward as far as disclosing who the bidders are but not the scores? No, but okay. I, I do want to add, I... I vaguely remember that it's in the work plan to document our internal processes. Is mm -hmm. that's still in the work plan at some point, correct? So yeah. that there won't be a question in the future. Yes, I if I understand the question. Yes. Okay. And okay. as far as the uh we we aren't going to just terminate a contract without cause. If 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 the contractor is not performing, we would give them time to to remedy the problem, because to go out to bid again would be um, would cost the agency a lot of time and money. So um, we, but that standard language that you see in a lot of contracts. Yeah. Thank you. Now that we have uh, Rose here, we'll go back to two in just a minute. Um, but unless there's anyone else to speak on items five, six, eight, nine, or eleven, I'd like to have a motion to approve those under the consent calendar. So moved. So moved. Thank you. Second. Somebody said, there we go, thank you. Any further discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. And now, Governing Board Chair, we are back to number two. And I will, when you're ready, I'll be happy to make a motion to adopt the resolution. Okay, back to the Governing Board item two, recommended action. We've already been given a report, and um, so I'm waiting for an action, uh, motion, sorry. I'll, I'll make make a motion Second. to um, this is a big day it is a big day should have had a little bubbly or something carbonated right there but, but you guys for letting me be part of the, the this is a historic moment I really appreciate you guys um, holding off I apologize for being late there's, I, a, I, there's a little car fire on the we didn't. <laughs> yeah, open space authority for, for making this happen um, this is a historic day. This is what the HCA was all about. Um, my first vote in my first week in office was to whether or not to approve an HCA. And it was a 3-2 vote, and I was in favor of it. And that got done. That was five years ago. Yeah. And this is the first piece of property to go into it. And it's a <coughs> tremendous um, piece of property and towards our goal. And I saw from your report that with this one piece of property, we met 
a third of a couple, three of our requirements, which is tremendous as far as that goes. So it, it's my honor and privilege to be part of this. Um, I know Mayor Tate's been a part of this for much longer. I don't know how many years you went back, and I don't know if I, anybody else... I didn't even count them. <laughs> he's, he's somewhere back around 10 years, I think, is, is what he is. So it's, it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing, and it's um, my honor to make the motion to adopt a resolution approving a conservation easement over the UTC Coyote Ridge property and all the APNs that are listed on the, on the uh, agenda. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes unanimously. <laughs> Chair Tucker, if we could please uh, re vote on number one also. Okay, so we will have to re vote on uh, approval of the minutes of the June 18th regular governing board. So moved. Second. second. So I have a motion and a second. All in flavor? Aye. <laughs> I'm thinking of All the cupcake. Favor. <laughs> Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> that cupcake is. There you go. Okay. You guys should stand behind us and my, my aunt will take a picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys space space before, before you leave. Please. Before you leave, why don't you just stand right there and we'll get a picture? We can it's do a that historic now. moment. <laughs> maybe that maybe with that yeah. in the background? Yeah, you, should they stand there? Yeah. Should we all go there for a minute? Is that all right, Madam Chair? Yes, let's take five minutes. I don't think we're going to take a picture. Oh, I wouldn't be too worried about it one way or the other. Come on. It says governing board. board member Implementation. Do you want that slide? Do you want the first slide that says UTC property? Come on. <laughs> Get up. <laughs> okay, okay. Just checking. Wonderful. Exchange photos. Thank you, everyone. Back to, I think we need to go to item four. Yes. Oh, that's. Yes. That's both of us. That's both of us. So moved. Second. <laughs> item four, Madam Chair. <laughs> yes, item four. All in favor, approve the minutes of the March 19th Joint Governing Implementation Board meeting. All in favor. Aye. 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 Passes. Madam Chair. Yes. Can I confirm that? Uh, all items under governing board are now completed? Yes. Yes, you may comply. So if I'm not on the implementation board, mm -hmm. this would be an appropriate time for me to step away. That Thank is you. an appropriate time, unless you need to stand in for someone who is not from your region. I okay. do not believe so. Thank you. Not everybody knows what a fragrant fritillary occurrence is, so Go. it's important. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you member Simidian. That's all around. Oops, it off. Thank you, thank you. All right, we'll move on to the uh, implementation board action. Again, we've handled five, six, eight, nine, and eleven under consent. Pulled seven off, and I'll, I'll look to our executive yeah. officer Sullivan to give us a brief report on seven. What's being asked of us? Yes. So, what the agency is asking is that the implementation board adopt a resolution modifying the participating special entity policy to authorize the executive officer approval of participating special entity agreements that have category exemption 
negative decks, negative declaration, or mitigated negative declaration, environmental review clearance in accordance with CEQA and the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Plan. And, and sort of the justification for that is people like a lot of organizations like Gavilan and Caltrans and PG&E like this uh, kind of fast track uh, ESA permitting process that this PSE um, program allows for them to tear off of the plan and uh, utilize it to get their permits for um, ESA and CESA issues um, through us versus going through the, the old Section 7 process with the federal and state agencies. Um, this, uh, it, so we're, we're very popular. And a lot of these projects are very time sensitive. There were a couple OSA projects that fortunately the governing board was able to uh, address in June that were really, they were category exempt, they were small restoration projects but still needed uh, uh, ESA and CSA permitting. So, uh, and they needed to start construction. And there's some bridge projects, there's some um, uh, Caltrans uh, road projects. This PG&E one that was just, you guys just approved is super time sensitive. It has to do with uh, their gas pipeline testing and they're under court order to do it. So it's just to allow for things that are handled, uh, you know, that are more routine business would be handled by a planning commission or zoning administrator kind of level to sort of allow the EO to have that authority to streamline the process. It'll save the applicant some money, it'll save the agency some money, and it'll allow us to be, uh, go be able to respond to these requests quicker. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. And th the reason I pulled it off was it was on consent, and, I, and consent was perfectly fine. I just thought this particular item, it was important because of time sensitivity of applications and the fact that we meet about every 60 days, we wanted to give our executive officer the authority to approve those. And on the third paragraph of the staff report, the last sentence says, the executive officer may still refer to the implementation board any project with a negative deck or mitigated negative deck, which he or she, in this case, he determines would be more appropriately considered by the implementation board. So we do have assurances here that if there was a reason to bring it before us, you would. But in the meantime, our giving you this authority allows us to be as most efficient, um, cost-wise and time-wise as possible, and also beneficial to us and the applicants. Um, I have a question. Yes, just well, please go ahead with your question, and then I'll, do we have anybody speaking on this issue? No, we don't. Please go ahead. Um, it, it sounds it sounds like a good idea to me. So mm -hmm. I just wondered, though, just so, just so I understand um, mm -hmm. what what authority we're giving you, mm -hmm. um, can you give an example of something where we might want to, where you would recommend that we could would consider it, even though there's a yeah, the Gavilan College Coyote Valley. It did have an EIR, but let's say it had a mitigated neg deck. You know, things that happen in Coyote Valley are controversial, so I would want to bring it to the board and. So that, so that would be an example. Um, if it was a project uh, that was we needed to discuss to the board, it was impacting a particular resource that um, our partners, uh, so let's say it was affecting, let's say some seasonal wetlands, and we don't have a lot of take within the plan for seasonal wetlands, and let's say it was gonna affect uh, uh, a half acre of seasonal wetlands, uh, the PSE application, I would want to come to the board and say, how does the board feel about giving up some of that partner take and giving it to a, a participating special entity? So those, so those would be two instances where it was affecting a, a resource where uh, it's the amount of take that the plan allows for is limited or it was something that was publicly controversial, like something happening in Coyote Valley or something, something to that effect. I would want the board to weigh in. That totally makes sense. Yeah. And, and then even though you're, you're going to make these decisions, they're not going to come to us, mm -hmm. we're going to get a report. We're going to see that this was done. So we'll be able to review it after the fact. Yes, anyway, I, right? can, I, can, uh, I bring these up at the co-permittee meetings all the time and the TAC, and I can, uh, in my EO report, I can talk about 
PSE applications that we've processed. And finally, is there any, to the attorney, is there any legal issue for us if we adopt this and then later there was some controversy even though it was a mitigated ne negative declaration? No, I don't believe there is. Uh, any problem? The, the policy is attached to the resolution in its entirety, but the main portion that's being changed from the prior policy is really the f part that you find under C, which designates which ones would go to the executive officer and which ones would still go to the board. And as it's as is stated in the report and in the policy, the executive officer can always bring them to the board. Right. And and one more thing I'd like to add: we're we're only um, sort of permitting these applicants for a specific uh, biological. Uh, mitigation measure so they still have to do their air quality and their traffic and if there's an economic development impact but all all those normas normal CEQA sort of triggers will still apply to those projects and they still have to seek clearance under CEQA and mitigate for their traffic impacts and all and all that other stuff so we're only dealing with a very narrow yeah also yes good question well, I'm a little curious, how many requests are you receiving for um, PSEs? And also, have you come across the instance where participation would change the CEQA process for a project that by joining in, they've been able to avoid an EIR? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. Yeah, normally, the CEQA documents are complete before we even see them, so they uh, I, I would say that the answer would be yes. They could they could avoid an EIR by um, a potentially to uh, a significant to less than significant by being able to say they're mitigating through the habitat plan. I would say that there there is a potential there. I I wouldn't say there isn't. Yeah. So so does that appear to be a, an incentive that's bringing people into us to join in? It's it's hard for me to say. Most of the the. A lot of the stuff we're getting is what you would, uh, the, they have this program level CEQA clearance, Caltrans does and PG&E does. So, and we're doing this Los Gatos Bridge one, uh, not, not the historic trussel. <laughs> That's one I'd be bringing to you guys. <laughs> but, uh, but so, um, I, I think they're, they're viewing the plan as a good deal, both in terms of saving time and, and in some cases not having to go through a mitigation bank and paying um, a lot higher uh, fees to mitigate for their impacts. But they, a lot of these are program level um, uh, sort of projects that are already covered by these umbrella CEQA documents. That's, that's the majority of them. But when you do have a gavel in coming in, that's that that's where there's a project specific CEQA document that could be potentially um, doing doing what you're saying. Yes. Any further? No. Any other questions? Yes, Rob. Mr. Courtney. Would you mind uh, reminding me at least uh, what the difference is uh, between the PSE agreements mm -hmm. and what say a private party would do just through the standard permitting process and yes. how it sort of relates to this Absolutely. administrative process you're proposing. So so these are organizations that uh, like school districts and Caltrans which typically PG&E which typically don't have to get permit clearance through local government. So they either go through uh, a state process or you know in the case of PG&E some sort of utility commission process I'm sure. So they, they aren't regulated by uh, local government. So they're coming through us to seek the, uh, you know, that very narrow uh, permitting for endangered species impacts. And um, that's all, I mean, we, we see their entire CEQA document, but that's all we usually focus on. So they, so they go through their normal processes for the rest. But yeah, so when, when uh, Gavlin came in, uh, even though the proposed project is in Coyote Valley in, in the county, right on the border of the city of San Jose, uh, there was no uh, regulatory oversight by either the city or, or, or the county on that, on that particular project. The, the city and county could comment on those projects, but they didn't have any permit authority. 
so then they come to us and say hey can you help us with this permit problem which is in that case was red-legged frogs yeah. thank you yes thank you all right with that i'll look for a motion to approve the modification so moved thank you second and a second thank you any discussion none all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed none that passes unanimously that brings us to number 10, which I should have put on consent before. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? None. All in favor say aye. 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 That passed unanimously. And Mr. Sullivan, we're back to you for your report. Yes. Thank you. What, what's that? 11. oh, 11's done. Oh. 11, 11 did on consent. Yeah, 11 got moved to consent. Oh, no, that's okay. Yep. Thank you, Chairman Wasserman. Um, so I'll just give you an update on the RGP. A, a lot has happened. Um, I'm not going to get into the details I would have gotten into in uh, closed session, so I'll just give you sort of a sketch of what's happening. For last time. But uh, I, I met with General Toy and his staff on August 20th, and I uh, secured assurances from General Toy that a regional general permit would be issued to the Habitat Agency this year. Um, he was uh, quite embarrassed with what we've gone through and he came from the LA district and he said he never quite saw anything like this and he also said he never encountered so many complaints we weren't the only ones complaining I also like to thank congressman Honda's office for really helping push this for us because I think without his support and the congressional delegation um, so we came at it from several fronts we used the the county lobbyist Chris Mitchell who was a great asset in pushing it from that perspective we kept pushing staff locally and then pushing the the leadership of the organization the US Army Corps to do something and, and they and they they did respond so subsequent meetings with the San Francisco district civilian staff uh, led by Tory white who has uh, replaced uh, at least it, it's hard to know what's going on there in terms of, uh, <laughs> and I don't want to get into details, but she, she's from the Jacksonville district, and uh, she's very much a solution-oriented regulator, and the meetings have been very productive. We, we pushed to keep Lisa Mangione as our, as our point person still involved with part of the project. They've assigned two people to this to deal with separate aspects of, of our application. Um, I do believe we have a path forward now, and, and uh, we're expecting to get this permit issued to us at, at the end of the year. So it was a um, big day. Yeah, it is. So it's good news for all of us, and especially project proponents. They Little like, champagne bottles. For yes. I, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If, if we were a, if, if we were mad men, you know, that yes. pull out the scotch or something. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We're only in advertising, huh? Uh, uh, so then the next steps is to start engaging the regional water quality boards and in trying to integrate their processes as much as we can. It's going to be harder to do that, but at least if we can try to integrate small projects, because there's a lot of small projects that get hung up by the, uh, uh, especially the San Francisco Regional Quality Board, and if we can figure out a way to integrate and them to sort of recognize that the mitigation we're doing is is meeting their requirements then that's the next step some preliminary discussions with uh, their director um, Bruce Wolf have been encouraging and I've heard uh, ICF staff and OSA staff talking about how there seems to be a uh, some change sea change over there so uh, it's uh, I'm encouraged by that and we need to start engaging them more directly so the Black Mountain financial accounting software and tracking, which tracks all our fees and, and how we're doing and, and making, it'll be part of the annual report and all the good financial housekeeping that we're developing <laughs> is up and running now. So, and I'd like to thank Jill uh, for the hard work she did in getting that software package uh, integrated in and moving up into the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> Um, glacial speed. Yeah. And, and as I mentioned, we're uh, working on uh, creating all um, 
uh, pertinent, uh, I don't think I spelled that right, financial policies. They, they will be presented to the governing board in January for approval. Um, we've uh, contracted with CPS HR to, uh, to help assist us with um, developing personnel policies. And um, we are also doing a recruitment for the principal program manager position that was in the budget. Uh, 26 individuals applied, um, 13 have been interviewed to date, and we're looking to do seven or eight. It will be part of a pool for second interview. So hopefully in November, I'll be coming to the board with the new person that you can, uh, you know, introducing that new person to the board. Um, Land enrollment, so Claro Park, now that we got UTC done, Claro Park is our, our next, and um, this is, uh, uh, was identified in the plan as being a uh, property that was important. Uh, with, they have an array of resources out there. It's a beautiful park. It's got a lot of great recreational amenities and there are a lot of great natural resource amenities. So. For us, uh, what we focus on is species, so it has the same serpentine uh, uh, landscape and, and uh, ecology that you find on um, Cowdy Ridge. So you have the butterflies, you have the plants, you got the frogs, the salamanders, there's potential. Uh, well, there is the, the only tricolored colony, tricolored blackbird colony in, in uh, Santa Clara County is nesting um, in, uh, on the outskirts of the park, um, and the water district um, um, reservoir. So it's it's a very important um, property to be enrolled in the reserve system. And the way this is set up, this the enrollment of this will offset uh, fees that the county would be paying land cover fees and serpentine fees. So this is part of that land in lieu that you guys approved. And this, uh, uh, this was uh, vetted uh, through the plan and there were several other properties that'll be coming like this over the next couple of years to, to the board. Uh, OSA Coyote Valley is a similar situation. They're, they're enrolling this existing parkland in the reserve system to offset uh, their impact fees that, that they would have to pay normally through, through the plan. And both these properties will be managed more intensely for a species benefit. So that's the trade-off. Uh, OSA and the county avoid paying fees, and, but they agree to manage these lands more for the needs of the covered species. Uh, we're collaborating with PG&E on acquiring properties, and I'll, um, I can, I'll be filling you in on how that's playing out in various closed session discussions over the next uh, year. And, uh, also today. Discussions with uh, private landowners continue. Um, we've, we started some feelers uh, talking to some potential willing sellers and hopefully be coming to the board in November to ask for um, authority to start negotiating with some of them. Uh, we submitted a um, $2 million uh, Proposition 1 land acquisition grant through the state and it's for the Lamont property. And uh, we, go, we submitted that yesterday. It was a, uh, ICF did a great job putting together a very difficult application in a very tight time frame. So hopefully we'll get, get that funding to help with that acquisition. We we'll also be submitting a section six grant this year for acquisition. And we're wrapping up the reserve land uh, management and monitoring plan. Um, we submitted three, uh, well, we submitted one uh, uh, local assistance grant, and then there were two others that were submitted uh, on our behalf, and they were all shortlisted, and full proposals will be submitted to the state in um, October. And if we get all three of those, that'll be close to $300,000 in funding. And those are more scientific type grants. Uh, we're continuing to work with the city of San Jose on a management agreement for the regional wastewater facility, Burling Owl Lands. They're talking to us about land in lieu, so we'll see how that all plays out. Um, and 
I'm going to have a conversation with the city again next week. Uh, they're trying to get comfortable with what, what all this means, and, and we're making some good progress there. Initiated conversations with some private landowners to dis discuss collaborative opportunities for managing their lands for burrowing owls. And uh, we're, I have a meeting next Thursday. Hopefully, I'll be coming back to the board with some good news about we reached an agreement with a, with a landowner on managing their land collaboratively for burrowing owls. Um, we completed two RFQ processes and uh, creating an on-call consultant list for restoration design and property appraisals. So we had, for the property appraisals, we had nine firms submit their quals. We selected six. For restoration design, there were 10 that submitted their quals, and, and we've selected um, eight, eight of those. So we'll use that list now to do our um, yeah, it to pick from to do our restoration design and our appraisals. The final draft of the conditions implementation guidebook um, is complete. The guide will be street ready late next month. So that's a good thing too. It'll be uh, a much needed tool for our partners. And that's it, thank you. Wonderful, thank you for that report. And that's Yet we're going to adjourn to closed session, I assume, back here is where we're going to go. And anyone who wishes to speak before we convene in closed session back there is welcome to. We have an opportunity for public comment. And with that, let's not adjourn. Let's move over there. <laughs> okay. Can we come back here? Do we, what do we need for closed session? Okay. What do we, we don't need this for closed session. How long is closed session going to be? Do we know?